this. Fan and show. Thanks for checking it out. Numbers are up. That's not a bad thing. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. You know, the usual. Welcome aboard. I usually put the credits for the music in the description. But thank you to Jay Beatty and crew. I don't want to say their names publicly. I'll put it in print. I don't think I want to say Graham Morley or Fergus. <laughs> Fire Grant LaFleche appears on a website at the URL of GrantLaFleche.com. So somebody got clever. And took the old boy's name and made it into a Fire Grant LaFleche site. There are two petitions apparently now firing for the godfather of misinformation, Grunt LaFleche. Is this bullying? <laughs> it, like, I, I call people names. Is that bullying? Am I going to get suspended for this? <clears throat> Anyways, Grant LaFlash is uh, not a friend of the people, more the enemy of the people from the standpoint that he constantly propagates fake news. Now we have this website and two petitions to have him removed from Tor Star Communications, whoever owns the St. Catherine Standard, which this man claims to be an investigative reporter who'd been upgraded from a previous title of columnist, column, column, columnist, columnist, communist. God made them sound the same for a reason. <laughs> Sandor, Shandor is a the correct pronunciation. Seems to be one of the only dudes that's standing for free speech an honest and fair, unbiased, objective reporting in this community. Shandor, thank you, brother. He uh, had him on the show, and um, he's standing for truth and integrity in journalism. And what is with the eyebrow, dude? Ev I mean... You know those e-girls or those social media girls that just have the same pose for every picture, every selfie, two selfies a day with the same smile from the same angle? Grant LaFleche is one of those girls. He poses with this eyebrow raised like, hey, I know something you don't know. Call me Holmes. Holmes. Uh, I got uh, something else I'll call you. Anyway, two petitions to have him fired in addition to this one. One apparently is for uh, the business community. Robert George started it. Oh, and very shortly, I'm recording this 
at 3.43 p.m. on a beautiful Thursday afternoon for broadcast later on 7 p.m. But in just over 15 minutes, Grant LaFlash is going to be a guest on the Tom McConnell Show on 610 CKTB. I wonder, well, maybe I'll carry it live. Maybe I'll pirate the uh, interview and broadcast it live. But it will be live. It, it, you should be able to see it. You won't be you're not going to hear this before they go live. But apparently, Tom McConnell's interview with Grant LaFlash, who shows up, I think, 4 o'clock on Thursdays on Tom's show, you remember back in the day when I was at 610 CKTB where the standard was not welcome in the studio of 610 or any of the radio stations because the standard at that time was taking news that the station was breaking and not giving credit to wherever it was coming from. So 610 got their back up and said, no, you're not welcome here. Grant LaFleche came on my show. Maybe I was the first guy to break that thing. Grant LaFleche and I used to be friendly. Can you believe that? Laura Yip and I used to be friends, not just friendly. Like we went out to coffee, I think Pearl Gloves. I may have escorted her to that. Funny when your politics change, along with your belief system, you just don't see your life through the lens of a 24-year-old anymore. That was my first election as a Green Party candidate in 1993. Suddenly, your lefty friends start abandoning you and giving you G Dear John letters on the way out of your Facebook friendship, writing on your wall about how you should get off your knees and remove a certain appendage of Donald Trump's out of your mouth. I'm not bad in politics. I've done it many times, unlike most of the candidates that I face. Even the seasoned ones are not really that well versed in politicking electioneering and debating I'm pretty good at it back in the day Grant LaFleche wrote articles to were cheering me one of the editors picked a headline something like if it, I don't know it's the Jim Fannin show or if debate performances were uh, election wins, Jim Fannin would be the winner. Jim Fannin steals show, I think the one of the headlines said. I don't know. It was back in the day. But I'm good at it. And I used to get pretty favorable coverage because I know my stuff. I can get it out. I'm a pretty good communicator. And I'm funny. I'm entertaining. I don't think Grant LaFleche is going to cover me so well anymore. He's got me blocked on. Oh, Grant, hey, come on the show anytime you want. I offered to bury the hatchet with Grant LaFleche when I ran for mayor. I ran for mayor to keep Waller, Wally Senzik out. Didn't work. Jeff Birch was supposed to win that bad boy. It didn't happen. Yeah, it hurt, but I'm over it. Wally hasn't really done anything, so... Also, he doesn't have, hasn't had the opportunity to really screw things up either as the mayor of St. Catharines. I don't even know. Where was I going with that? See, this is where I should be able to rewind, go back, listen to what I, where was my train of thought? Anyway, I ran to keep Wally out, not to get my name in the paper. Oh, that's it. I offered during that election with Peter Secord, Jeff Birch, myself, uh, Mark Stevens. We were all upstairs 
at the St. Catherine Standard Building at uh, One St. Paul after they had moved to Queen Street. Grant LaFleche was hosting and moderating an all-candidates meeting. It's not really a debate. All-candidates meeting. Julie was running the camera, the video camera, and another scrub from the office, I can't remember who, was kind of right-handing with Julie. Love Julie. Great photographer and a wicked person. Anyway. I offered to bury the hatchet with Grant, and I remember telling him, listen, we've got a whole campaign to go here. It doesn't make sense for the candidates or one of the candidates to have a beef with one of the media guys. Like, just can we can we get over ourselves? Can we have a beer? Whatever happened, like, can we can we drop it? I'm not sure what happened, to be honest with you. But similar to Andy Gill, I started making fun of Andy Gill on the radio. Suddenly, he didn't like me anymore. I mean, making fun, good-natured fun. He dropped out of pearl gloves. I laughed it up on the radio. He threatened to sue me. For what? Chris Biddle was his lawyer. (laughs) Now, we didn't get a letter. The station got letters. I didn't get a personal letter. And I don't think the station got a personal letter threatening to sue me because there was really nothing to sue. What are you going to do? The guy made fun of me? (laughs) Come on. So I offered to bury the hatchet. I extended the olive branch to Grant LaFleche during that campaign with the idea that it would be better for the electorate if we had a good campaign and fair reporting and not a hostile media member. So... During that all-candidates meeting, I used a little portion of my answer time to drive straight at Grant LaFleche for his chosen words. can't remember. Uh, oh, I said something about wasn't very nonviolent. What did he have? Uh, I can't remember what it was. I made fun of him, essentially, in, in a couple of my answers, and I could tell I was getting to him. And then one of my answers... I took a good portion of my two minutes, like half of it, to rip the way he wasn't letting me answer the questions. He was challenging me. He was putting words in my mouth. He was intimating things. And he was flat out misrepresenting my position on things. He stopped me from answering in my two minutes and said, you can't use your two minutes to to talk about me. I'm like, I can do whatever I want. With my two minutes, my two minutes, and if I want to talk about what a clown you are, I will. (laughs) Anyway, after the all-candidates meeting, I was pretty friendly even with Walter. Peter Secord and I go way back. I've always been pretty close, not close, but friendly with Jeff Birch. Mark Stevens I've known for a long time, got no problems with. I actually am quite fond of Mark Stevens. All the people up there are probably one of my favorite guys. And so I was the first to, to, to excuse myself to grab my stuff and, and get ready to exit the standards office. I made some time with Julie. I love Julie. Good woman. I'm always, you know very good about communicating my appreciation for people that are helping in the background why do I never show my face anymore okay I just got you on a Sandor screen here at least I could give you something pretty to look at there you go uh oh well at least the pop up comments don't come up that's that's all right um I could give you this look, but do you really need to see this fotch? Do you? Anyway, I used to do this all the time. I don't know why I don't know more of it. Um, I just get tired of seeing my face, I guess. I don't have a nice green screen or whatever, so 
Anyway, it maybe makes more sense if you can see my beautiful fatch. And let's uh, let's give you something else to look at here. Why not? Fifteen hundred. Let's put some CNN on the corner there. Like she goes to work at three in the afternoon and sometimes By gets way, off Bell at midnight. Is she works a lot. Awesome. A whole lot. I am not a big Bell. We fan. don't get to eat in the early morning. We well, just wait till we get to the school. Two hundred and fifty dollars so, a month, Kojiko yeah. client. Right now, here Back in America. Day. Millions of kids like Victoria that. and Andre TV live with hunger, and vicious. the need to help them has never been greater. But when you join your friends and neighbors to support No Kid Hungry, anyway, you'll help hungry door, kids get the food the they need. Building. If we want to take care of our children, the door, then we have to feed them. Your gift of just 63 cents a day, only $19 a month at helpnokidhungry.org right now will help provide healthy meals and hope. We want our children to grow and thrive and to just not have to worry and face themselves the with the struggles that we endure. Nobody wants that for their children. Like if up. these programs didn't exist, me and AJ, we wouldn't probably get lunch at all. Please call or go Jesus. online right now with yeah. your gift of just $19 a month. And when you use your credit card, you'll receive this limited edition t-shirt yeah, to show you're family. part of the team that's helping feed kids and change lives. If you're coming in hungry, there's no way you can listen to me teach, do this activity, work with this group. So starting their day with breakfast and ending... So then he stood up and he... We went face to face and I said, dude, I told you, let's just bury it, man. Why can you not get over what? Well, like, what did what did I do so bad that's got you so pissed off? And why can you can you not just let it go, dude? Like, what's the deal? Um. Anyways, he 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 didn't appreciate that. Uh, and he also didn't accept my um offer of bearing the hatchet. Hey, that's fine. I'm not everyone's cup of tea. I get it. I got a mouth. I got a take. And even when I was a Green Party guy, I was really solid in my convictions. Strange that I don't have those convictions anymore. Anyways, he got up in my face. I'm much taller than he is. And um, basically, I said, what's your problem? Let's just keep... I, I offered to bury the hatchet a long time ago with you. What's your problem? Anyway, he said what he said. I said what I said. It was a short conversation, and I said goodbye. You know, I was respectful. There was a woman in the room. I did call him a fucking punk. Because who doesn't shake someone's hand in public other than Andrew Gill. Well, one of my former girlfriends. That was embarrassing. <laughs> she probably had good reason to do that, though. <laughs> yeah, Andy Gill refused to shake my hand in public. And then, well, I guess I had to, uh, I got to add Walter Senzik to that list now. At Grape and Wine, there was no Grape and Wine this year, but I went to the park and celebrated with a couple friends and a few uh, musicians. I brought a cooler of beer and <sighs> got drunk out. And then I walked down to the mansion house and finished off and then took a cab home and suffered. Wally came through the park, and my friend wanted to go talk to him about guns for whatever reason. Okay, not, you know, my pet subject. One of them, but not the most important thing. Okay. So I figured, you know, why sit with my back to the man? He knows, like, I'm, I'm not going to just not look his way. So I don't know, out of respect or out of common courtesy, not so much respect, I get up and I walk over to Walter. I extend a hand and he offers me his elbow. <laughs> I'm serious. It's September in the park. 
I said, I can't, I don't even know if I can say what I said. <laughs> Anyway, I did not accept his elbow, and I told, so, it was like, I think I reminded him there was only a few other people in my life that failed <laughs> to shake my hand in public with witnesses. Here. <laughs> Fuck off. Hey, I get it, man. It's flu season. <laughs> okay. If you're worried that you may be susceptible to dying of COVID, I get it. Shaking hands probably isn't the best idea. Drinking out of somebody else's glass probably isn't a good idea. Oh, I don't know. You know, sharing joints, the bong, kissing on the mouth, having sex, touching each other's hands, putting your fingers in people's mouths. <laughs> Yeah, again, yeah, you probably shouldn't be doing that if you're worried about catching COVID and not even dying from COVID. Just I am, one of my friends from high school calls me germ fanon. Why? Because even in high school, I washed my hands so much that especially in the winter, my knuckles were red from being washed. I don't touch common surfaces often. I don't touch elevator buttons. I don't touch the bathroom door when I'm leaving it. I don't touch the handle to flush the toilet. I don't touch the lid to put the lid up or down. Usually I can do most of that with my foot. I don't like getting sick. And I don't like passing on my sickness to other people. So if I have a cold, I'm going to keep my distance. If I've got the something contagious, I'm just... I'm going to keep my distance. I probably won't, you know, share as much. <sighs> this is turning on to a long rambling episode. I should probably jet out and come back so that I can get on, so I can hear Grant LaFlash go live with Tommy. It's 4 p.m. EST in... Uh, the beautiful Niagara region, Thursday, February 25th, 401 EST. That's PM. Anyway, as I left my encounter with Mr. LaFleche, and again, I am down. Have a beer, call it even. Say sorry for whatever misdeed was done. What? I'm irredeemable. I'm, I'm, I, I, there's no value left in me as a human being because what? I changed my political beliefs. I changed the way I see the world. I changed some of my opinions. I'm still the same guy. I still come off the same way. I'm funny. I like to make jokes. I like to tease. I like to make fun. I like to mock. I haven't really changed other than my political beliefs. So Grant, just in case, like I know there's a lot of haters that watch my stuff. Andy Gill. Rob Gill. <laughs> Rob, you have to watch my material to know that I said something hateful. I've never said anything hateful out here, I don't think. I mean, is it hateful to say I hate that or I hate that? I hate them. I hate you. I don't think I've said that. I'm probably going to get shut down now just for saying I hate, 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 hate. Open invitation, Grant. There's nothing that you've done to me other than be a tool and not a very responsible reporter. I can get past that. If you want to, like, call it a day, shake hands, agree just to I'll have a beer with you. Have a beer with anyone, even Laura Yip. Rob Gill, open invitation. Dude, you targeted me on Twitter. You've got 30,000 followers, and you asked them to help them 
take me down because you couldn't do it on your own. It worked. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> Congratulations, Rob Gill. You got my, my Jim Fannin show account suspended also. You know, I had Jim Fannin, at Jim Fannin, 10,000 followers. Pretty decent account. It was a lot of fun. Gone. No hate speech. I did tell Cuomo I hope he fell and bumped his head. That was deemed violent. But Mr. Robbie Gill, you must be watching. I know Andy Gill watches because I see him come live on my Twitter streams. <laughs> he just can't stay away. But you both got me blocked. Grail of Flesh, same thing. Listen, all you retards. <laughs> you want to bury the hatchet? You want to come on the show and talk about it? Talk about why I'm such a piece of shit and why you're so virtuous and righteous and, and holy and right? Hey. I'm, I'll have the conversation. I'll even have a respectful conversation where I don't get amped up and yell and stuff like that. I can handle it. There's nothing. You're not going to drive me to cuckoo bird. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not sure that that'll happen. But I'm a big enough guy to go, you know what? You want to bury the hatchet? I'm down. Life's too short. We're all in this together. <laughs> ah, what a virtuous pile of crap that is. Man, I'm really making this into a long story. <laughs> On the way out the door, I walk out of the office. I'm the only guy that leaves. Grant wasn't being friendly. I felt like I made my time with the scrubs, Julie Kosak, and whoever else is helping her out. So I let myself out. As soon as I get through the door, I hear, kaboom! <laughs> the door slams behind me. It's like one of those office, that's how I remember it anyway. It's like the, one of those office doors where you get the, you know, the pile, the, uh, the separation in the middle. Well, look at me. And, you know, there's two doors. Divider or whatever. I could be wrong. It was a big, heavy office door, and it went kaboom behind me at One St. Paul. And I turn around and look, and I'm like, what a fucking clown. Now, many of you know I love women. Uh, I've normally been in long-term relationships my whole life. I was talking to some guys on Facebook uh, yesterday and uh, Notre Dame came up and I was happy to talk about some of the old times and stuff like that and I <laughs> I mean <laughs> what am I talking about now <laughs> uh, anyway oh I remember I've always had a long-term girlfriend um because that's the way I like it. I don't, I'm not, I've never been much of a guy that dates and plays the field and juggles multiple balls. I'm not saying there hasn't been balls in the air at some time, but normally I am happy and loyal to be in a committed relationship. And uh, the last relationship I was in, five minutes ago, <laughs> it's 10 years. Anyway. The story on the street, Grant was um, lunching my girl for whatever reason. I think he was trying to recruit her to Pearl Gloves. And she was giving him the time of day for whatever reason, which, well, I'm not her boss. You want to have lunch? Have lunch. Not my favorite guy. I hope he didn't get the check either. <laughs> oh. oh, you get the door. You get the check. You get the car door. You know, you... <sighs> Poor guy telling tales out of school here. Listen, dude didn't even also didn't even didn't get the check. But the story was is that I lost my shit and he had to throw me out of the office. That was he told my girl what you didn't know? We I think we we're living together at the time, actually. What you didn't know we were together? He told my girl that I lost my shit at the debate 
and that he had to throw me out. GrantLaFleche.com. Fire Grant LaFleche. There's two places you can go to sign a petition. And, uh, well, maybe you want to do that. All right, so what have we here? Shandor, is how you pronounce the first name. Touched on it earlier. It's his Twitter feed, at WTF Niagara. It used to be the Brock Bug. <laughs> he has um, got an event that he's going to throw. He's March 5th. He's going to give an award to Grant LaFleche for <laughs> Niagara's best journalist. <laughs> he's, gonna <laughs> he's got an event planned. Um, so <laughs> check him out. But okay, so Sendor standing up for free speech. He's got three issues that he's working on here. One, Blisma did nothing wrong. Rick did nothing wrong. Alicia did nothing wrong. Where's your good doctor? What's he got to say these days? Can you tell I have no script? I'm supposed to be... Well, I'm trying to clean this file up because I had it on pause, so I get to finish it. I could go live without finishing it, but and you don't need to hear that. Here's what I like to do on uh, Fauci's page. Sorry, Hirji's page is look at his likes. All right, so y you expect that he's going to like the regular public health posts, maybe. But Julius Lalonde, okay, I hadn't haven't looked at this one. <laughs> um. Hi, uh, sorry, is this Taylor Swift's page? Oh no, Julia Sloan. Feminist buzzkill, Franco, what? Fem, what? MMA? That's not very feminist. That sounds kind of macho for a girl. 30,000 followers. That's almost as much as Rob Gill. Rob Gill's got 30,000 followers. Hirji loves the extreme wacko retards. Sorry for those that are offended by the word retard. We don't mean it like in the sense of mentally ill. <laughs> Do we? Okay, so Julie S. Lalonde. Um, yeah, she's a lot of fun, probably. Let's see what she's up to. Uh, I'd like to see what they do. Um... Good. Uh huh. I don't know. I am um, not a big fan of the radical left feminists. So anyway, I I know enough of her to know that she's radical. Okay. But uh, here she likes her. Okay. Who else we got? Don't know who this is. Public health. Okay, you expect to see these peeps. Oh, Julia S. Lalonde again. <sighs> wow. Lincoln Project tweets. Lincoln Project. For real. Dudes. <laughs> it's not right. <laughs> anyway. Biden, okay, fine, you like Biden. Somebody retweets you, yeah, you're going to like that. Anyway. Am I boring you significantly enough yet? Go s check out Shandor. WTF Niagara is a Facebook group. Rick, as, um, what do you call it when you... Uh, I don't know. You say like you're outraged and somebody says, put his head on his neck. 
like you're you're parodying you're making fun of the comment with something extreme that doesn't even doesn't have anything to do with violence it's not actually calling for the beheading anyways Shandor has done a, a great job at ripping all this down and you can find it all there and I mean maybe you don't care but this is how you fight the system of fake news because this should not be tolerated taking comments on a support page and putting it's it's unbelievable how deep it goes. You know, somebody said compared, you know, the tracking device to I don't know, something about the Holocaust, which is always a bad comparison or something about their neighbor their Jew neighbors or something like that. And suddenly it becomes hunting Jews. Nobody said anything about hunting Jews. <laughs> like grab a flash, listen, dude. <laughs> It's not too late to turn it around, dude. You can just go back to reporting actual events without the opinion and the slant and the investigative takedowns of innocent people taken out of context and literally and purposely and intentionally sensationalizing them. It's sad. Uh, we're tired of it. If you're tired of it, go sign the contract. Uh, go sign the... Uh, Grant Laflash. Somebody bought the URL, grantlaflash.com, and put this up. Um, okay, whatever. That's what people do. Now, Shandor has gone and got, um, what's it called? Niagara's Best Journalist. Yeah, Niagara's Best Journalist.com. He just bought. <laughs> So Blysma said that uh, something about Black Lives Matter. Basically, I don't think he said this, but I'll say it. They're a terrorist group. Fuck Black Lives, La Black Lives Matter. They're a black supremacy group. They're a Marxist organization funded by the the left. Billionaire, like, co-opted by Antifa, too, because... Antifa's kind of got into their little thing, and now they're both kind of the same. You see them at the same rallies. <sighs> it's disgusting. Anyway, go check out Shandor. He'll tell you all about it. So Rick Blysma uh, did nothing wrong. Rick did nothing wrong. Alicia did nothing wrong, but... Apparently, Alicia was one of the groups that called for the beheading of Dr. Hirji. Even Dr. Hirji said, I expect to get backlash. You know, he downplayed it. But this stooge right here got cute. Well, how can you not love a face like that, eh? He got cute and, and blew it all out of proportion. And so here we are. So I'm, are we done? How long am I in now? 30, have I been talking about Grant LaFleur for 40 minutes? <laughs> okay, well, that's enough. Did I say, an, did I give an out before? I don't know if I said it. Well, if not. Peace, love, hug your neighbor, and for crying out in the night. I wish I, wish I had a full screen of me so I could, I could get right up in there. Take that fucking mask off. Today, I tweeted this earlier. I didn't tweet it. I put it, it, it put it in Facebook. Today was a bright, shiny day. It was also a, ver a very dramatic day for this kid. Like, I had one of those days that never happens to you. No specifics necessary. It wasn't all bad, but it's just like, What? happened to you seriously yeah i had one of those days and uh i can only tell a few people about it. i haven't told anyone about it yet but yeah i had one of those days today and uh i'm also having one of those days where i seem to not be able to remember my train of thought while i was wrapping up peace love take the mask off 
I was wrapping up. Well, how did I get distracted in my lap in my wrap up? <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with me? Okay. Um Music? How about a little want some? It's um it's good when you have a brain fart. Oh, what am I doing? I had it right there. There it is. Let's see. Oh, it says it's playing. Let's get this up. Oh, here we go. Peace. Love. Hug your neighbor. Take that filthy, dirty mask off your beautiful face. We miss you. We miss your smile. Defy. Do not comply. That's where I was going with that. Take it off. It's no mask march, baby. Take it off. out loud right now 